Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Paul, and I am a nerd, and I am here to tell you that you are lucky enough to be attending the February 2015 TABS 3 Virtual User Group Meeting. Today we're going to be talking about uh, payment allocation. I'll be talking about that, and Mary Jo is going to continue her reporting on the uh, uh, series, On and today she's going to cover the client and timekeeper realization reports. But before we do that, a little bit of... Uh, Housekeeping, this right here is the GoToWebinar control panel. If you are still seeing this big part of it, it means you have not pressed this button that looks like an arrow pointing to the right, because had you pressed this button that looks like an arrow pointing to the right, this would have slid off your screen. That's what that button does. Once pressed, and once that slides off your screen, this button turns into a, a button that looks more like an arrow pointing to the left, and clicking it again will cause this to slide back into focus. Why would you want to slide it back into focus other than monitoring the things that are going on? Well, it'd be because you have a question. If you have a question and you type it here and remember to hit the send button, Leanne, our um, humble and old moderator, and we celebrated her birthday today. I'm not being mean. I'm just kind of pointing out facts. Leanne, our humble and old moderator, will uh, will recognize that you have a question. <laughs> Yes, I, I did repeat that. That wasn't very nice. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's terrible. I can never. I can never think of what to say, and that one just popped into my head. Um, people warned me about saying the things that popped into my head. I guess this is why. Uh, Leanne, our humble moderator, will recognize that you have a question. She will interrupt Mary Jo or myself at exactly the right opportune moment, and she will ask your question on your behalf. Now, I don't know about Mary Jo. But I sometimes get in trouble for saying the wrong things and also rambling or getting off track or going off onto a tangent. So if I'm doing that or, heaven forbid, if Mary Jo's doing it too, uh, you can continue to type questions here. You can continue to remember to hit send. And Leanne, our humble moderator, will continue to interrupt us and continue to ask your questions on your behalf. Now, if you're not feeling shy... You can also press this button here that looks like a hand with an arrow pointing upwards in front of it, and uh, that means raise your hand. Leanne, our humble moderator, will recognize that you have a question. She will again interrupt Mary Jo or myself at the opportune moment, but this time what she'll do is she will unmute your microphone and you can ask your own question. Now again, we may get off track, but we're going to leave your microphone unmuted in case there are follow-up questions as we're answering the original question in case uh, we get off track. So keep in mind that this will be a no Fritos, no Doritos zone until you're muted back up and may continue eating your lunch. Now, with that all said, and without any further ado, I'm going to press all the magic buttons that I can find, and I'm going to uh, turn it over to Mary Jo. And Mary Jo, I'm going to go ahead and get you into into the software. We forgot to load that up. You start talking and I'll get you in the right place. <laughs> okay, no pressure there. At least I'm not old today. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, well I'm going to talk about two reports that can be very helpful um, to get some figures uh, that usually our attorneys want. Um, when they say they want to know how much uh, a client has paid or um, how much uh, time that they have worked and, and gotten paid on, they don't necessarily care. Um, they don't necessarily care if that number uh, is is for this particular month in general. They want to know overall. I build this client X amount of dollars. How much has that client paid on that time? Um, or I worked this amount of time. How much did I bring in on that time? And the client realization and the timekeeper realization reports will give you that real time, I build this amount of dollars and I brought in this amount of dollars on that time that I build. Um, so we're going to look at those two reports. Uh, both of them are underneath our report tab in tabs under management reports. And we have the client realization here and the timekeeper realization here. The only difference between these two reports is what you're looking at. The client realization is from the client perspective. You're looking at this client and how much did I build this client and how much has this client paid on that time. Whereas the timekeeper realization is from the timekeeper perspective. Timekeeper 1 billed this amount of, of dollars this month, and they brought in this amount of dollars on that time this month. So just different perspectives, 
same kind of information. So let's look at the client realization first. So we'll open that up. Our first screen here, same as all of our other tab three reports and our choices. So we'll skip right here to the options. We can do either a detail or a summary. So we have two different views here that we can look at, depending on how much information that you want to show. Um, choosing summary um, is just going to show a little bit less on the screen. Maybe you want the detail client information. That's up to you. And you can run it either way to see the difference. The report date is just the date that you're running it. We are in sample data. So of course, this is going to be November of 2014. But you can choose a date range. So if you just wanted to see from January 1st to January 30th, or a quarter, or a year, whatever you want here, you can put your date range in. You can decide whether you want to include fees, expenses, advances, and finance charge. Either any combination, one or all of these things. So I'll click all of them to show you what can uh, show there. And you also can say that you want to start each client on a new page. The Format tab gives you some different things to include as far as columns go. Would you want the original hours that were out there or just what was billed? The realization rate is going to calculate in here. Um, the original value, the billed amount, the billing realization, estimated hours that were collected, collection amount, collection realization, and you have the option to choose the write-offs or what was uncollected. Now, I get a lot of questions on what do all these mean. And you know, to try to remember you know, this every time you run the report, you know, what are the original hours? What are they looking at? Or what is the realization rate? What does that mean? I like this yellow question mark. And we've talked about this before in a lot of our screens, and, and all of our screens, in all of our programs, this yellow question mark is page specific help. And it's going to give me descriptions of all of these things and what it is calculating and how when I click that. And I want you to see what that looks like, because this can help you in many reports or many different screens if you're not sure what to do. Now, I click the yellow question mark, and you can see right away that I'm in the client realization report. And I have all of the tabs that correspond to my tabs on that report. Just by clicking on one of the tabs or the list, they're both the same thing, gives you two different ways to do it. I can get to either this format here or the format tab, and I will be able to see every single one of these fields and what they mean. If I click the include, that's the section I'm in, I can see what original hours means, what build hours means, what it's figuring for the realization rate. It's taking the build amount divided by the original hours. All of these things you know, I can look at and see any time. So you don't have to memorize that. You can come in here and you can look at that and say, yes, this is what I needed to see. I need to see that collection amount, or I need to see you know, what that realization rate is. So very handy, helpful information in that, um, on that report that you can see what, they're, what they consider original hours to mean, or what they consider build hours to mean. So come in there, again, yellow question mark, click on the tab or the area that you need to look at, and then look at what it's showing you there. Sometimes this will even give you examples of what it'll look like. Um, a lot of times, if you're not sure if you want um, a certain box check because you don't know what it's going to show you, sometimes they'll even have an example of what it's going to look like if you check it. So yellow question mark, very big help. So let's get back out here. We're just going to go ahead and show some of this information here. And I'll, I'll choose uncollected as well. And then we can sort this by um, primary, secondary, originating, or by category, or just none. And then our standard things down here as well. You can subtotal by client, include grand totals, all of our, our same options here. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look at this one. We'll preview that. I just left it open for all clients. We're in sample data, so we don't have a lot. And I included just about all the columns, so you can see, get an idea of what's there. And it is breaking it down by timekeeper um, for each of these matters. So I can still see that Michael Jensen had billed 14.83 at, um, you know, for original value of this. This was his build amount, 2188. Um, and we've brought in 487.29, which is actually 22.26% of what was owed. And this is what's still uncollected over here. And I can see that by each attorney, because I'm on the detail view. I also can see where my fees are um, up at the top. I can see where my expenses are in the middle, and my advances here at the bottom. And if there were any finance charge, that also would show in another section. I don't know that any of our sample data has any finance charges in here. Um, but if it, were, if it did, it would have um, that right down in here um, as a line item as well. So you could see whether that had been collected or not. Okay. 
there's one right here. So there's a finance charge. This is how much was billed and how much was collected of that. Let's take a look at this in our summary view. Same column, same everything. We're just going to show the summary so you can see the difference. And in this instance, I'm not getting the breakdown of the timekeeper, and I'm only getting straight across the board what these total amounts are for each area. So I just don't get all that breakdown by timekeeper. Okay. So that is the client realization report. Let's look at the timekeeper realization. So back here on same management reports, timekeeper realization. Again, our first screen is always the same here. This time we don't have as many tabs because we don't have nearly as much criteria to do. Um, but we can go in and again choose our different drop downs. We can show all, whatever we need to see here. Um, you can pick a working timekeeper. If you just want to show this for one particular working timekeeper, you can do that. Or if you can just leave it open and do all. And you also can run this report by level. So you can say, I just want to see all the senior partner's time, or all the associate's time, or all the paralegal time. You can do that by level if you have those defined. The format screen, again, we're going to have the original hours. Now, we, you'll notice back here we didn't have the option for expenses or advances because we're really, in this report, concerned about attorney time and what did they work and what did they bill um, in their hours. And we're not really concerned about what they billed for expenses or advances on this report so much. So again, we pick and choose what we want here. The yellow question mark will, again, describe all of these different things here. So um, we can take off some of these um, uh, columns here, and maybe we just want the, the build amount, the build hours. Um, maybe we don't care about the estimated hours collected. Um, you, know, you can just pick and choose what you need here. And again, write-offs can be included. This one's a little simpler. There isn't any sort or anything like that. We're just going to go in and run this, take a look at it. So this one, I have all the timekeepers because I didn't specify one or another. And I did all, but you could do this for a month or a quarter or whatever you needed to, a year. Um, define those time periods that you need to do. These are great ones to, if you, know, if you need to look at uh, what their collection rate actually is. Um, this is good. So bill hours, realization rate, how much the uh, build amount was. I'm looking at Michael Jensen across the board. Um, he's, he's gotten in almost 99% of what he has um, billed. He only has 27,97733 um, out. So he's doing pretty good. He's got 86, there's 90. You, know, you can see what their collection realization is and how they're doing on the time they worked versus who's paying. So now, again, if I needed the detail on which client is paying, which clients are not paying, I would do the client realization. But in this case, I just wanted to see what he billed, what he brought in, in the month of whatever it would be. So another handy report, a lot of attorneys like that. Um, you know, we talked about the cash receipts report before, and we've talked about, you know, productivity reports and things like that, but that's not a, you know, build amount uh, versus what we brought in on that build amount. This is direct correlation with that. So these realization reports are, are real handy in that regard. So, Paul? Very good. Good reports, good information. Let's talk a little bit about how uh, Mary Jo mentioned the uh, the cash receipts report or the receipt allocation report, and actually as we covered them recently in one of our tab three virtual user group meetings. Let's talk about how that money gets allocated. We know we can see who brought in what money, but did you know that you had control over how it gets allocated versus the default? Let's take a look. I'm going to go back to the main tab here, and I'm going to go into the client manager just because I like to go about these things through the client manager. And you can see that Peterson Insurance Company's uh, general legal counsel matter has uh, about $2,600 in AR. I'm going to go into the payment screen for them, which going through the client manager is kind of a given. Uh, and keep in mind, our system thinks today is 11 17 14. Uh, some things never change, including the date on our sample data. Um, and I am going to immediately point out that right down at the bottom of this payment screen, we have something that allocates how this, this client's AR 
does break down among fees, expenses, advances, and finance charge. As we know, he owes a little over, or they owe a little over $2,600, but $34.44 is expenses and the rest is fees. Now, the very most simple way that you can break down allocation is by statement. So I'm going to drop down this little box, and it is going to show me, in this instance, the two statements that still have money due on them. So these two statements, number uh, 7594 and then the earlier one, 7590, have these amounts due on them. So the very simple thing I could do is, is say I'm going to apply it to, to one of these two statements. Now, you don't need to do this if they're paying their bill that is the oldest because tabs will always, well, depending on how it's been set up, tabs will default to paying the oldest bill first. But if this client, for instance, mistakenly is paying their $1,551 bill, which is the most recent one, you'd want to be certain to say that we're paying statement 7594 by selecting it because you'd want the money that you're entering to apply to that statement, not the older one. You'll notice when I select statement 7594 that now the accounts receivable changes, area changes to reflect the accounts receivable balance for that particular statement number and now I can go ahead and enter a payment. Now I'm going to back up for a second. I'm going to actually get out of this payment entry window. I'm going to go into client's um, setup for this matter. I'm going to go over to setup, and I'm going to point out that at the bottom here, we have the method to apply payments. Now, the most common way to apply payments is this way. Oldest finance charge, then oldest advances, then oldest expenses, then oldest fees. The second most common way is the way that was selected when I came in here, which is all of the oldest finance charge, then the oldest, all of the oldest advances, then all of the oldest expenses, then all fees. Uh, and then there are a couple other ways to break that down. What does this mean? What does this mean? Well, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to go to a slide that I did that gives us an example. If I've got the first method selected, which means it's going to pay all of the oldest fees first, and that would be 110916. Let's say that I came in here and I had a payment of $1,500, just around $1,500. It's not it's not specific to either of the two statements, and the client paid us $1,500. By the first method, where it pays all of the oldest expenses, then all of the oldest fees, and then goes on to the next statement, 110916 would be applied toward the first statement's fees. Then 3444 would be applied toward the next statement's expenses, because those expenses get paid before that statement's fees. And then the remainder would be applied to the fees. If it was the second methodology where all of the expenses are paid before all of the fees are paid, and I paid $1,500, it would first go towards this, then toward that. If I paid $1,000 under that allocation method, it would first go toward this, and then go toward that. If I paid $1,000 under the, uh, the first allocation method, where the oldest statements paid off first in order of expenses, then fees, then that $1,000 would all go to that. Hopefully that's clear. I, I, I don't intend to explain it in such a way that you will understand it crystally clear because I don't have time for that. But I wanted to let you know that this configuration right here is paramount to how your fees are going to be allocated when your payments are made, how your payments are going to be allocated when they're entered into the system. If you don't have this set right, then it's not going to default to what you expect it to default to. But if you do have it set right, then nine times out of 10, or even 99 out of 100, you won't need to do what I'm about to show you. So let's go back and let's enter payment again. And let's say that we're going to enter that payment for uh, $1,000. Now, the minute I put a number in here, and before I even get out of this field, this little button lights up. 
And Mary Jo and I and Leanne have decided that we think this looks like a dollar bill with wings. And I think that honestly is what it's supposed to be. Because this is the button that you go to to see how your money's going to fly into the right places, how it's going to allocate. And what this takes you to is a screen where you can see your allocation from a bunch of different perspectives. For instance, when I'm clicked on this, it's going to show me how that $1,000 is being allocated amongst everything. If I wanted to see just how it's being allocated to fees and who, I could click that. If I go here, it's going to show me how it's being allocated among the statements. If I click on a statement, it's going to show me how it breaks down in that particular statement. Part of it is being applied to this statement. If I click the other statement, you'll see where the rest of it's going. If I click here, I'll be able to look specifically at fees, expenses, and advances on those particular statements. So I can see exactly, exactly how this is being broken down. And if for some reason, be it that you don't like Michael Jensen or that he's the managing partner on this matter and he's decided to not get his money first, you can go in and reapply. I could say, oh, we're only going to give him credit for $250 of this payment. And as soon as I do that, it tells me that I've got 336.20 left that has not been applied. And then I can go someplace else and apply it. Once I make a change to the automatic application, it's then up to me to, to go in and manually apply this unapplied amount to other things. Okay, And you don't want to leave it unapplied. You want to get it applied across the board. Now, it's not very often that you do this. And I'm going to actually get out of here and come back in and show you the way it does it right off the bat. Most people simply come in here to assure themselves that it's allocating the way that they think it should. But you do have the ability in here to actually override the application of these funds for this particular payment. Now, again, I'll emphasize, if you've set up the defaults correct on a matter-by-matter -matter basis, no less, then you don't have to worry about ever doing any manual adjustments because it should apply exactly the way you want it to. And Paul, I'm just going to add just real quick that you can never allocate more than what is actually due. So if you go back one screen to where the fees are, you'll be able to see the amount that is due in that column uh, for the, the due. Mm -hmm. And then you, so you cannot allocate any more in that column. So if for some reason your allocations weren't set up right and Paula Martin was supposed to get a bigger percentage than Michael Jensen, you can't go in there and give her $1,000. She only has 419.81 due. So you can only allocate with, up to that amount that is due. Exactly. You'll get this message saying, hey, she can't get $1,000 because she only is entitled to the remaining 419.81 that has not been uh, paid for, if you will, out of the work that she built. Good point. Thanks, Mary Jo. Now, when you're done, um, if you've messed around with these numbers and you didn't mean to, you should hit cancel. If you're just here to look, you can hit done. And help will give you information just like that context sensitive help. Both of these will work to give you information specifically about how to adjust this. I guess the thing that I want to make crystal clear is that when you come in here, this is not, these are different views. These are different ways of looking at the same information. Well, how does fees allocate uh, just for this statement versus how do fees allocate for the balance as a whole and for the payment being applied to, to all the statements? Um, how does this statement differ from this statement versus, again, the amount as a whole broken down by the two statements? Different views of the same thing. So you can basically see all your allocations from all the different perspectives that you'd want to by clicking on the appropriate part of the tree over here. And that is how your payments allocate. Once you have uh, entered the payment um, here, you can come in here. If you've made an adjustment, you'll need to save it. If you haven't, you just cancel out or, or say you're done. And it'll allocate it the way that you have set it up as a default to allocate. So that's that. Now, I got so uh, flustered when I uh, mentioned how uh, seasoned uh, Leanne is that I forgot to mention 
the first time that uh, version 15.1 and version 15.2 are due to be sunsetted in June, is it Mary Jo? I think it's June. It's either June or July, but I'm pretty sure it's June. Now, uh, oh, you have a question. Is that what you came in and told me? We have a question. There's a question. There is a question. We may have gotten past the point of knowing what the question was about. So, Deanna, we might need some help here. But her question was, can you complete? Can you please compare these reports to the receipt allocation report? OK, so she was probably referring yeah, to That was probably back about. to what I was talking about. And the difference there is the receipt allocation report is going to show you what was billed in the month of January and what money came in in the month of January, but they may not necessarily be related to one another. You might have billed out you know, $10,000 worth of time, and you might have gotten in $15,000 in payments that month that was allocated, but it may have nothing to do with the $10,000 that you billed, where the realization reports are, you billed $10,000 in this month, and we brought in X amount of dollars on that 10000 So that's the difference. Receipt allocation is just going to show you what you actually billed, what you actually brought in, but not necessarily on that time. It's not connected. So hopefully that answers the question there. And so I was babbling about version 15 and 1 and 15.2 being sunsetted in June. So be careful if you are on version 15.1 or 2, you will lose support come June. Uh, Mary Jo and I uh, had been saying, or I had been saying, and Mary Jo had been agreeing with me at least, that 15 was being sunsetted. Now, OK, shake your head. No. 15 was being sunsetted. It actually is 15.3. Uh, there is a version 15.3, and it is not being sunsetted. So if you have 15.3, um, it, it is not being sunsetted probably for another year or so. 15.1 and 15.2 are. Um, I was a little confused last time because I thought there, were, uh, there had to be a 15.3. Uh, and, and what I was looking at said 15.1 and 15.2 were being sunsetted. So I made the assumption that 15.3 is also being sunsetted. It is not. So be careful there. If you have 15.1 or 15.2, they're being sunsetted. You can tell by looking up at help and then about. And it doesn't matter which program you're in, tabs, practice master, APGL trust, they're all going to show you which version you're on. And we're, we're on 17.1. So if you're on 15.1 or 15.2, take note and be sure to get updated before that. Um, next month. We are going to be talking about the client and timekeeper productivity reports. Mary Jo is going to continue her ongoing series on the different reports that are available in tabs. I am going to augment that by talking about the real-time versus period-based reports. The reports we looked at today are, are real-time. The reports we're going to look at next month are period-based. I'm going to explain what that means, uh, how to tell the difference, and, and why that's important. And last but not least, I want everybody to know that if we go to our web browsers and type www.attorneycomputersystems.com with the emphasis on that last S before the .com, that we can always see exactly what's going on with the VUG meetings, the virtual user group meetings, uh, all the video content that we have. So for instance, if we click on tabs three virtual user group meeting under videos, we will be taken to a page where we can register for the next session. As you can see, March is about uh, those two productivity reports and the basis, uh, the difference between real-time and period-based reports. This top section is always going to be about registering for the next VUG virtual user group meeting. And then as we scroll down, we'll get to see the videos for the uh, sessions that we have recorded. Now, the first one is currently in post-production. Well, it's not even there yet because we're doing it right now. Um, but then as we scroll down further, this is the video from January of 2015, and we'll get to December. So all of our video content is here, including the Paul and Mary Jo show, that TV show that format that uh, we've all come to know and love, Mary Jo's special eBytes video series of very short and specific tips and tricks on how to do certain things in each of the programs, and my Coffee Pot webinar series where we, on a monthly basis, go into great detail about some feature or some add-on or something that you can you can do extra with the with the software. We also have enhanced search capabilities. So if I type email statements, it'll pop up and tell me what I should search for, or it'll pop up right away and give me a um, 
there we go. A lot of different ways to search for the things that we are looking for and get to content that is relevant to what we're looking for. So be sure to take advantage of that. Uh, that search capability is new. This organization is new. The website's new. Um, videos have been there for a while, but the way we've organized them and the way we can search for them now is, is a great improvement over the way it used to be. So go out there and take a look. We will see you all next month. Everybody have a great rest of the afternoon, a great month, and, and we'll see you in March. Thanks much. Bye-bye.